Greetings, this is J.R. Dickey. Thanks for tuning in to our podcast. And by the way, don't forget our website, graceandtruth.net. I hope you're having a great day, but if not, hang with me. It's about to get better. Well, I think we've got a good lesson today. It's called Faith That Doesn't Fit. Let's get started. You know, we learn a lot about the character of God by watching how Jesus acted with those who didn't fit in. You have to realize that the Jewish society of his day was utterly steeped in the notion of who was considered in and who was out, who was accepted and privileged and who was not included, considered filthy or supremely insignificant. In Luke chapter 7, we meet two people who were definitely on the outside, one a Gentile soldier, and the other, a sinful woman. It's also an interesting setting, that is, Capernaum. For although Jesus did many miracles there, he also condemned the place, you can see Matthew eleven twenty three, for their lack of true repentance. Well, Luke 7 goes like this, and a certain centurion's servant, who was dear to him, was sick and ready to die. So when he heard about Jesus, he sent elders of the Jews to him, pleading with him to come and heal his servant. A centurion was a Roman officer in charge of a hundred soldiers. If anyone was an outsider to Jewish society, it was a Roman a Gentile, and indeed a Gentile who was part of the oppressive army that dominated the nation. But this centurion, being very much attached to one who served him, when he heard about Jesus, sent some of the Jewish elders, uh, the in crowd, to plead for Christ's help. Of course, this was more than a little unusual. It was amazingly unusual, mind-bogglingly unusual, even scary unusual. Luke continues, And when they came to Jesus, they begged him earnestly, saying that the one for whom he should do this was deserving, for he loves our nation and has built us a synagogue. Nevertheless, they genuinely implored Jesus on behalf of the officer, noting that he was deserving. And why? Did they really believe it? Or were they scared that he could order his men to tear down the synagogue? Uh, More, if rebuffed. Well, can't say. And we should note that Jesus said on another occasion to a Gentile woman begging for help for her child that To help her would be inappropriate, saying, It is not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the little dogs. That's in Matthew 15. Meaning that his mission and ministry was to the Jews, not the Gentiles. Uh, Not yet. So this request could easily have gone south, so to speak. But Jesus went with them. And when he was already not far from the house, the centurion sent friends to him, saying to him, Lord, do not trouble yourself, for I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Therefore, I did not even think myself worthy to come to you. But say the word, and my servant will be healed. For I also am a man placed under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to one, go, and he goes, and to another, come, and he comes. And to my servant, do this, and he does it. To say that this kind of behavior from a Roman officer was unexpected would be an understatement. It was amazingly unusual, mind-bogglingly unusual, even scary unusual. But how did it affect Jesus? Well, when Jesus heard these things, he marveled at him. And turned around and said to the crowd, followed him, I say to you, I have not found such great faith, not even in Israel. There are only 
two occasions in all of the Bible that say Jesus marveled. And this is one. Christ marveled at great faith from an outsider. And as a result, those who were sent returning to the house found the servant well who had been sick. Great story. And then there's another occasion in which Jesus dealt with an outsider who was actually inside a Pharisee's home. It says, Then one of the Pharisees asked him to eat with him. And he went to the Pharisee's house and sat down to eat. And behold, a woman in the city who was a sinner, when she knew that Jesus sat at the table with the Pharisee in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster flask of fragrant oil and stood at his feet behind him, weeping. And she began to wash his feet with her tears and wipe them with the hair of her head. And she kissed his feet and anointed them with fragrant oil. Yes, Jesus was attractive, like a magnet, to outsiders. Here a woman who was morally repulsive to Simon the Pharisee entered his house at great risk and put on a display of love and humility that was amazingly unusual, mind-bogglingly unusual, even freakishly unusual. Well, I'm inclined to believe that she did not go in intending to wash his feet with her tears, but on her knees, finding him accepting of her, she broke forth in tears. His love was unexpected, and she wept. Then seeing that his feet were wet, she used what she had, her hair, to wipe them, and she kissed them in humble admiration and thankfulness. Then she used her costly, fragrant oil on the very spots that would soon be pierced with a stake to the cross. Luke says, Now when the Pharisee who had invited him saw this, he spoke to himself, saying, This man, if he were a prophet, would know who and what manner of woman this is who's touching him, for she is a sinner." The insider was offended. In his cold, hardened heart, he saw nothing to be impressed by. And Jesus answered and said to him, Simon, I have something to say to you. So he said, Teacher, say it. Well, there was a certain creditor who had two debtors. One owed 500 denarii, the other 50. And when they had nothing to repay, he freely forgave them both. Tell me, therefore, which of them will love him more? Simon answered, said, I, I suppose the one whom he forgave more. And he said to him, you've rightly judged. Then he turned to the woman and said to Simon, You see this woman? I entered your house. You gave me no water for my feet. But she has washed my feet with her tears and wiped them with the hair of her head. You gave me no kiss, but this woman has not ceased to kiss my feet since the time I came in. And you did not anoint my head with oil, but this woman has anointed my feet with fragrant oil. The rudeness of the insider was exposed. Jesus continued, Therefore I say to you, her sins, which are many, are forgiven. For she loved much, but to whom little is forgiven, the same loves little. Then he said to her, Your sins are forgiven. The faith of outsiders doesn't fit in the established religious order. Insiders only approve of other insiders. The Bible says, And those who sat at the table with him 
the other insiders, began to say to themselves, Who is this who even forgives sins? And he said to the woman, Your faith has saved you. Go in peace. The centurion's faith made Jesus marvel. And this woman's faith brought his blessing. You see, Jesus is deeply affected by the unusual, crazy unusual faith of the outsiders. And he responds to their need. This is what we learn. Religion is all about coloring inside the lines. While Jesus is all about real, even if unusual, faith and love. The former does not displace the latter. God bless you all. Now may the Lord grant you peace in the midst of any storm and faith to trust him. Look for our next podcast and may you realize more of his grace today.